Philadelphia, Union, San Jose, Earth, DC, Los Angeles, Galaxy, Beach Pass, Colorado Rapids, Vancouver Whitecaps, Seattle Sounders, Montreal Impact, Tosh USA, New York Red Bulls, Pitch Pass, your all access credential to the people that matter in MLS. Here's your host, Greg Roach. Welcome to Pitch Pass, and thank you for hanging and checking out this podcast all about MLS and the U.S. men's national team and soccer, not just in the United States, in North America. We had two guests lined up today, but we were having a little problem getting the logistics for our second guest due to some CONCACAF Champions League stuff. Oh, did I drop too much about who it could be? We'll see if we can get that person on in a future episode of Pitch Pass, which means today's guest has the spotlight all to herself. She covers the Montreal Impact for TSN 690 in Montreal. Yeah, we're going international. Amanda Stein, we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Anytime, my friend. Well, not anytime. And that's why I feel bad because <laughs> we asked you to go last week and, and not thinking it's in the smack dab in the middle of Passover. Yeah, that's true. So maybe not any time. It was Passover, so I had to take a pass on you guys uh, just that one time, but it probably won't happen again. Well, and then, and then, then I'm looking today as we're recording this, which is on a Wednesday. Well, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking on maybe the busiest day of a Canadian journal, sports journalist year, maybe. You have no idea <laughs> the day that I have had today. So with, it's uh, the NHL trade deadline. So uh, forgive me if my impact knowledge is not <laughs> quite up to par. I've uh, been up to my ears in hockey all day, though I did get a chance to sneak off for a couple hours and go hang out with the impact a bit. But uh, certainly, most certainly, uh, the NHL has been quite heavy. T- it's like almost a national holiday. Like, I think, you know, people call in sick for this day exactly. and free agency day. So. Yeah, so, uh, so all right, let, while we have you, let's let's pick your <laughs> NHL brain for ju- just very, very briefly. What was the biggest deal that went down on the NHL trade deadline, Amanda? Oh, I think uh, it was certainly the Columbus Blue Jackets made quite the splash today with the New York Rangers. They sent Derek Broussard. Marion Gabryk goes over a couple other players in that deal. That was a big one uh, because last year at this time, the big deal was someone going from Columbus, which was Rick Nash, over to the New York Rangers, and now you've got the flip side of that mm-hmm. uh, this year, going the other way around. And certainly, uh, Philip Forsberg, a uh, uh, number one prospect for the Washington Capitals, heads over to the uh, the Nashville Predators for Martin Arad and another prospect. So those were some pretty big ones. The team I cover, the Montreal Canadiens, stood pat. They didn't do much, which is okay with this city because uh, they're in the top two. And uh, as long as it's like that, no one really cares what they do. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this, because the city that I'm in, Washington, D.C., everyone is yeah. pretty outraged about the deal that went down. Is that a bad deal for the Caps? Well, I mean, Martin Arad is a type of player that they've had before in their system, at, and he, he's uh, on the older side, and you've got a number one prospect. I understand that idea of you know getting rid of a number one prospect, to bring in a guy that you've had you know, or similar to a guy that you've had in your system before that maybe didn't quite pan out as much as you would have liked to. So I definitely understand uh, being, uh, I don't know if the word's outraged, but upset about the deal going that way. Certainly in this city that I'm in, whenever a top prospect leaves our organization in a trade or whatnot, uh, definitely people get up in arms. Uh, you know, I can definitely look to the New York Rangers when we gave them one of our top defensive prospects and Ryan McDonough for Scott Gomez and, if you know anything about hockey, that didn't quite work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wait, Amanda, this isn't ice pass or rink pass. This no. is pitch pass. <laughs> so we need to talk a little bit of soccer, and the team that you cover is uh, maybe, I think, along with Chivas USA, probably the most surprising team in MLS, at least through the first few matches of the year. Uh, I'll ask you just to take a little bit of a, of a pulse of the, of the city, not so much the team, because they'll probably tell you that this was expected. Was the, was this, was the city kind of taken aback and, and shocked by the, the quick start from the impact? Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody expected them to be to come out as strong as they have. You know, four and one is an outstanding start for a team in their sophomore year, especially when they've changed their coach from year one to year two. You think that they're going to have to adapt to a new system, a new coach, and maybe, you know, get a little more under their feet, if you will. People are certainly surprised, but it's the best thing that could have happened for this team because people are so on board. I think the only negative in a way is that the Canadians are doing so well too. 
So it, it pulls a little bit away from that, but certainly when you're at the games, the home opener at the Olympic Stadium, the energy is there. And I'm going to tell you that the Montreal Impact fans are some of the most loyal fans that you will you'll ever meet. And you certainly do feel a buzz on game day. People are excited about this team, and they have plenty of reason to be. Yeah, it was. A, I, I've actually been to an impact match at uh, Stade Saputo. See, I did the French mm-hmm. way, Amanda, because I'm talking to you up in <laughs> oh, Canada. Very nice. So I went. Thank I went with I don't even call it that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you're right. It there is a. It's a. It's a. First of all, it's a fantastic. Uh, area or setting and it's a great place to watch a match and yeah they weren't even doing well by the time I got up there last season and uh, there was still a buzz and energy so I can't imagine what it's like or what it's going to be like they have off this week but next week is actually the first match of the year at uh, Saputo Stadium yeah it is and unfortunately Marco Schallibaum <laughs> won't be able he will to not be there yet. he will not be he there he will not be there exactly and I know that he's very disappointed about that we can touch on what happened there in a little bit but Um, people love going to Saputo Stadium. They absolutely do. Uh, The Olympic Stadium is not necessarily something people love uh, (laughs) when it comes to events. It's really old. The sound is not great. Uh, The the vibe, it's harder to sort of get a vibe going because it's so big. Uh, So people love Saputo Stadium. And, I mean, you've been there. And like you just said before, it is a great stadium to go catch a game. The energy is through the roof. I just hope that this cold spell that we've had in Montreal goes away before that game because I can tell you it is freezing up there or up here rather and I can tell you that I was at Saputo Stadium yesterday not on the actual pitch but around the pitch and the grass was frozen. Wow. Okay. So we'll we'll have to see but I'm not you know saying they're not going to play I'm sure that by that time, uh, everything will be okay and everything will go off without a hitch. Let me ask you a media question because this is, uh, I I believe that Henri has not made it to Montreal for either of the Red Bull matches. Is that a disappointment to the, to the, to the city being it's a French speaking city and, and he's French? I don't know necessarily that it's because he's French. I think it's really because of his name and what he's done in his career. You know, this city As much as it's a hockey town, they really do have their, you know, uh, soccer enthusiasts or or football enthusiasts, if you will. Um, And people love stars in this city. And so there's certainly a degree of disappointment when he doesn't come. And they, when they market these games, they market it around him. But he won't come here when they, specifically when they play at the Olympic Stadium because it's not grass and they play it. So we all know that story and how he doesn't like to do that, which is, understandable i suppose he has you know he can make his own decisions but yeah absolutely i think when any star player uh, doesn't make their way over here it's certainly a disappointment great start we talked about uh, on the road in seattle that's a long trip they were able to get a result then went back on the road or or in portland again mm-hmm. uh, in portland got another result uh, the win against new york red bulls uh, followed by a loss which you know uh, if they had won that game, you could say to yourself, wow, they are really, really got out of the box strong. But on the road against the Eastern Conference champion, that's not a bad loss for Montreal Impact. And it shouldn't take away from, from the start that they've had, correct? You said it did take away? Or it, it, didn't it, shouldn't, take away? it shouldn't take away. No, not at all. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely not. And, you know, I was with them today. This is the first time I got to spend some time with the team since that loss. And they don't see it that way. They don't see it as a disapp- – I mean, obviously, it's disappointing to lose, but they don't see it as a knock on their season so far. And, and from my point of view, a part of me is glad that they've lost because it's good to get that first loss over early to see how you can rebound from it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get too high. And these guys know they have a target on their back now because they're number one in the Eastern Conference. I mean, how can you not? But for them to get this loss over with, Let's see how they regroup from this. I think that's the most important. Um, It it wasn't a pretty lot. They know they didn't work hard enough. And we'll see what happens. You know, they have these two weeks off now, so we'll we'll see how they prepare for this game against Columbus. And to me, it's not a blemish. It really isn't. They're not, you know, you can't expect them to go win every game. Certainly not on the road, especially when they only won two last year. Yeah, yeah. They've already equaled that total, uh, and we're Mm -hmm. not even a quarter of the way through the season. So let's talk about the difference between last year and this year, um, specifically the vibe in the clubhouse. Uh, is it is it strictly due to the difference in coaches? And if it is, what is what is Marco Schellebaum bringing to the table that Jesse March wasn't? I like how you said that. Thank first you. Of all. That Thank was, you. <laughs> very fancy of you. <laughs> um, 
you know what? A lot of key players are still here from last year. They mm-hmm. really didn't make that much in terms of changes in terms of players, uh, additions here and there. But I think it was more a matter of these players that they have on Montreal's team are probably better suited to Marco Schallibaum style. And that's not a mar- uh, knock on Jesse Marsh, because if anyone knows me, I am a huge fan of Jesse Marsh. I think he really honestly did the best he could for the fact that he was new to to coaching and yeah. he was, you know, just because it was a new season and new players. And you have to think about it that these players now have a full year under their belt playing together. So it's familiar, they familiarize themselves a little more. I, I had a chance to talk to Jeb Bronski about it a couple of weeks ago, and, and that's what exactly what he pinpointed. He said, you know, coach change or not, the fact of the matter is, is that we've had time to learn more about each other after playing a year under our belts, and how can that not be a benefit? And was it important to have a guy who who has a certain amount of credibility with the the older foreigners on the team, as opposed to Jesse Marsh, who they probably respected as a coach and as a guy who knows MLS, but maybe doesn't have the reputation outside of the of United States and Canada that that Shelibama has in Europe. I think it's more a matter of the way the management wanted the team to play. I think they wanted a more European style. When they had Jesse Marsh, when they brought him in, they thought, you know, maybe we have to be a little more North Americanized and and play more to the MLS strategy. But when you look at the players that they brought in over the course of the season, whether it be Nesta or DiVaio or Ferrari, that's not their strong suit to play the MLS style. And so I think they really picked a guy that – could get along well and and play to the same tune as those cornerstones to their franchise for the time being. I really think that that's what it was about. It wasn't necessarily, you know, we need a guy with a a great track record. I I think they wanted a European guy. Mm -hmm. I do, because their key players, as I said before, come from Europe, and that's what they've been used to. And if you want to get the best out of your players, well, you can't ask these guys in the, the latter parts of their career to start shifting the way they play I think you have to adapt to to the way they play a bit. And listen, what can you say now? It, it's paid off so far. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, the thing that I said uh, after the first couple of wins was that this is, whilst it is basically the same team as last year and last year's team didn't do very well, you mentioned it. Nesta's got a full a full training camp to to integrate himself in the team. Uh, you got Felipe, who who has got a who is now more comfortable uh, in the position he's playing. Patrice Bernier is just continuing to blossom in what he's doing. Uh, Devio now knows what is expected of the rigors. So, you know that 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 year or that off season and having that training camp was probably important to this team. But the thing that I I pointed out was this team the starting eleven is 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 very very good, but. What's going to happen when the inevitable injuries due to the age of a lot of their key players start to set in? Um, and then what's going to happen once the once they you know, start filling in those blanks? And we're getting to that point right now as some of the guys are already starting to go out injured. Uh, is that something that is concerned to the, to the club moving forward this season? I don't think so. I think they're happy with who they have in their system and who they're able to call upon. You know, they have like a young cow we met which is a, he's a French kid from the Montreal area who, who stepped in when DeVaio was, or excuse me, when uh, Nesta uh, went down with his injury. They have people they're confident in. And I think that these older guys, such as like the Nesta and DeVaio, they know themselves well enough that they know how, you know, when they need to hold back, when they need to not be practicing. It seems they almost, you know, run their own show. And, and if Nesta's feeling tired or maybe cramping a little bit, he just walks off and they have a general understanding. There's certainly, I would say, that concern that when these, you know, main players go down, how do you fill those voids? I don't think you can ever yeah. really fill, fill those voids with one specific player. But I think you've got a really united group that – certainly will pull for each other and know that they, if, if one of these guys goes down, just as they've had with Alessandro Nesta, that it, it's really a group effort because there's no one person that can fill any of those shoes, really. Well, let's talk about some of the injuries. Uh, we brought up Nesta a few times. Where is he at in his recovery? I had a chance to speak to Mauro Biello, who will be uh, behind the bench, if you will, for uh, the next game because Marco Schalibon will not be there. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, he told me today that um, that Nesta should be back this Monday, so in a couple of days' time, and they're going to evaluate him leading up to the Columbus game next weekend. So 
they wouldn't say for sure whether he'll be playing against Columbus, but I think it'll be more of an evaluation during the week leading up to it to see if he's capable of it. He's out there in running shoes, you know, passing the ball around lightly before practice. He's around. So, uh, I mean, the team needs him. They really do. When you saw that, you saw that in Kansas City, that they they really missed him. And so uh, hopefully he'll be back practicing uh, full time with the team on Monday. Would be great for them. And I saw from your from your tweets recently, uh, Pisanu also picked up an injury. What's the story with him? Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't say very much when it comes to Pisanu and Romero. Both of them were not practicing today uh, on the sidelines, uh, hanging out a bit. Romero got knocked up in Kansas City a little bit. They won't elaborate on that. And Pisano's uh, nursing a leg injury. So there's actually this benefit to the the LA Galaxy game that was supposed to be this weekend getting canceled because now they have this unexpected bye week yeah. where they can start nursing those injuries. And it's good, you know, because they've got a lot of guys who are normally on their starting 11 who, who are definitely dealing with some issues now. So they're really taking it easy. You know, practices have been quite light this year or this um, this week. And so it gives them the opportunity to rest those guys at Romero, Pisanu, and Nesta and not have to rush anybody to come back, you know, out of that desperation of wanting to keep that uh, starting 11 together. Meta, do you have any insight as to what went down with the uh, Valentin loan to Norway? It kind of took a lot of people uh, south of your border by surprise. What's going on there? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I got to say it did surprise some people up here as well at the beginning of the season when they didn't see him uh, in that starting 11 or even on the bench for that matter. But I think at the beginning of last year, he was a big piece. Uh, Jesse Marsh was really high on him. He was in that starting 11. But it, there seemed to be some sort of rift that may have happened in the middle of last season where he was being used less and less and less. And this year, I don't think he fit into uh, Shalibom's plans. I don't think he, he – I don't want to say he wasn't good enough because that's certainly not it. But he just – there were just too many people ahead of him in terms of the depth chart. And I think there's some maturity that needs to be done in terms of the person, Zarek Valentin. And that's not to say he's a bad person. That's not to say he's immature. But – it's tough to be a professional athlete in this city. I can tell you that it is not easy for these guys. And you've got to have a, quite a sharp degree of maturity when it comes to being a city. And he's quite outspoken and he's loud and he's great. I, I like that as a reporter. Yeah. It's my dream to have yeah. someone like that. But I think they knew that he wasn't going to be able to crack that starting 11 or that bench because of the depth chart that they had. Um, and Calgary Met went in ahead of him, and I think that that was the last piece of the puzzle, that when Marco Schellibaum decided he'd rather Carl in the lineup and not Valentin, they decided that this is a guy they're going to have for a couple of years. He's still under contract. Let's get him some playing time. Let's send him somewhere where he's going to play. Norway did inquire about him when they found out that he wasn't playing. The coach there familiar with Zarek uh, a little bit. And so it seemed the best of both worlds. It seemed a good opportunity for him to get some playing time, some solid playing time, um, and also mature. And and the same thing happened to um, Patrice Bernier at the very start of his career with the Impact way back when. He also went away to Norway, and I had a chance to talk to him about that. And he said, listen, this is probably one of the best experiences that he's going to have if he's going to be a solid player Uh, in years to come it's a good opportunity for him to learn a lot about himself to learn about himself as a player uh, and also about the person so it came as a shock a little bit but towards the time that they actually announced it and we found out it didn't surprise me because you just knew that he wasn't going to get any playing time and and he needs it because he's young and he's full of energy and he still has a lot to learn so you need him to get that time so we, we talked about the the Shelly bomb incident at uh, at sporting. What you don't like the way I say that? <laughs> no, I do. No, I, I'm laughing at the incident. I'm laughing at the oh, incident. Okay, all right. I was like, don't don't make fun of my French flair that I try to put on my words. Um, <laughs> I love it. So the is the incident. Obviously, it's going to be a big deal because he's not going to be on the bench for for the next match. But is is it that big of a deal, or is it playing like that big of a deal in Montreal? No, not really. 
I'm not going to lie. I mean, I haven't really heard much about it in terms of, you know, the actual incident. Did he squirt water at the fourth official? Did he throw a bottle? That's what some people said. It's definitely very iffy um, in terms of what actually happened in Kansas City. But the thing with Marco Schaubaum is he didn't realize that by getting ejected that he would miss the next game. He didn't know that. He wasn't familiar with that rule. So it, it came as a bit of a shock to him when he found out after the game. But I don't really think it's an issue uh, about for, for the Montreal fan base. I think you know, Mauro Biello will be there. And, and Marco Schaubaum is going to work with them up until you know that very last point. And I think that the coaching staff is so... Uh, you know, they all share the same philosophies. And I hate using that word up here because that word came up a lot when Jesse Marsh was here, but they really do share a, a common philosophy on how to do things. And at the end of the day, Marco Schallibaum will prepare the team up until that final point, And then Mauro Biello will, will just be making those final calls on the, on the bench. So if you're one of the few Montreal residents, are you who, who don't follow hockey? Are, is your hope that the impact can at least maintain some semblance of this form into the summer, uh, and then when Canadians, their, their season wraps up, that uh, the impact can take center stage and be on a level where they're competing for a playoff spot? Is that your ideal situation? Absolutely, but what you have to realize is up here we also have another league. We have the Canadian Football League. Oh, so. come on, Amanda. Are you <laughs> no, serious? No, listen. I'm absolutely serious. The Canadian Football League is very, very big in this city. The Montreal Alouettes um, definitely fight for the, 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 the dollar from the impact. It'll be a, a, a fight between the two. But the, the, the best part is, is that they don't, they don't often play at the same time. But there, there is definitely that. I don't want to say it's a rivalry. It's certainly not a rivalry. But there's when you're talking about you know, dollars and where you're going to spend it. Yeah, they're competing. Yeah, they're absolutely competing for those dollars. So it looks, and if Montreal, you know, they in terms of the Canadians, they've been doing fabulous. I have a feeling they're going to go on quite the playoff run here. But the Montreal Impact fans will be behind the the Impact if they're going on. I don't want to say if they're leading up to a playoff spot. I can tell you that the one thing about this city is that whether you're an Impact fan or not, if you see a team that's about to go for a championship, people will be on board and be on board to the end. We talk about road trips. Everybody talks about Portland, Seattle. Uh, the Montreal away match for your favorite team is one that you should always circle because that is one of the most unique cities in in North America. And uh, you invited me up at, when you were on last year, promised that you would buy me a beer. You were uh, a woman of your word and bought me that beer. And it's, just, it's a fantastic city to hang out in and then to go and see a match at Saputo Stadium. What, what, what neighborhood did we eat in, Amanda, and, and then hang out in? Oh, we, uh, where did we go? We went to, uh, we were in the Mile End, which is a really fun area, a very hip area. That's a great place to go. So the Mile End is a fun place and it's relatively close to Saputo Stadium. I think that's the only thing that Montrealers dislike is that perhaps it's a little bit yeah. out of the, the calm, you know, the, the way, I guess. But uh, people make it there and that's all that really matters. The ones who want to be there, they're going to get there regardless. Yeah. And there it's is it's Metro a, that takes you pretty much right there, so that's always good. yeah. So there's public transport. I mean, let's not. It's not like Frisco in Dallas or or for for the no, Rapids. No, exactly. It's it's, it's public uh, public transportation accessible and also a quick cab ride from from the hot spots in Montreal. Where do we eat at, Amanda? Uh, we went to Milos. Th so the, and so, is where we went. So we're now recommending places uh, to eat <laughs> and and areas to hang out in Montreal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, Milos is a great restaurant. I will go there anytime. Hey, listen, next time you're up here, I'd be happy to go back to Milos. You know, it was, this was all just a setup to get you to invite me out for, for to buy me another beer. That's all. That's all. I knew it, was. man. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I know how you operate. It's okay. Amanda, thank you so much. I know it was a hugely busy day for you. So we thank you for taking some time and talking Montreal Impact. It's absolutely my pleasure. Anytime. This is your For more show information, go to pitchpass.com.